Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for, for coming out for this press conference. I do want to thank all of the members of the House and the Senate who are gathered here with me. But before I talk about the vote uh, that, that happened earlier today in the House and in the Senate, I do want to address the weather, which is a breaking event, and it's kind of hard to keep on top of it right now as the storm system moves west east across the state. Already there have been nine tornado warnings. Uh, we are receiving reports of some tree and structural damage in various parts of the state, primarily right now in, in North Louisiana. Uh, and obviously these reports are being investigated. Uh, we can tell you that there have been at least two overturned 18 wheelers on I-20 near Stark, Louisiana. We believe this is the result of very strong straight line winds um, that we were told by the weather service could be in the neighborhood of 50 to 60 miles per hour. Uh, and the, as the storm system moves across the state. Uh, we also uh, know that there has been a, a reporting of a tornado in the vicinity of Dunn and Richland Parish. Uh, we do not have any damage estimates and, and thus far uh, no reports of injuries. Uh, earlier there was a report, it, it appears to be false, uh, one of the 18 wheelers that overturned along I-20, uh, I believe actually overturned on a Richland uh, Parish Sheriff's unit but the unit was unoccupied. Uh, and so the early reports indicated that the deputy may be trapped inside. We don't believe that that was the case. We know a rescue mission has been successfully completed in Natchitoches where eight residents were trapped in a home that received damage from a fallen tree. Thankfully, no one uh, was injured. It's obvious that this weather system moving across the state today is eerily reminiscent of the one that passed through last week that resulted in an EF3 tornado uh, in the metro New Orleans area uh, with the most extensive damage and one fatality being in Araby in St. Bernard Parish. Obviously, we never know uh, how many tornadoes may be spawned uh, out of a storm like this. We don't know exactly where they're going to occur or when. So everyone, please be careful. Monitor your the weather channel monitor your local news and make sure you keep your phone on because it will tell you in advance uh, if if there is a tornado in your area and sometimes you only have uh, seconds uh, in order to relocate yourself and your loved ones to an interior room and make sure that you're protected something like a bathroom and and so forth if the weather hasn't already reached you make sure you know where that safe place is so that you can shelter. Um, the winds are the main threat, but not the only threat. Uh, there's a threat of hail and also potential for isolated flooding. Uh, but this is largely going to be a wind event, a straight line wind event. Uh, and so please, uh, everyone, uh, be aware of that. Uh, very dangerous conditions out on the road. Approximately 60,000. Uh, customers are out there without power at the moment, and that number goes up every time we check because the wind's blowing trees into lines and so forth. The majority of the power outages that we know of thus far are actually in Jackson Parish. Uh, so please be weather aware. The storm system will not exit the state until sometime later this evening. Uh, don't know whether we'll need to have another press conference because of the weather uh, and whether we have another UCG meeting today. We did have one this morning. will depend on what we learned for the rest of the day. Now, let's turn to the legislature's vote today to overturn the veto of uh, the congressional map uh, that came out of the special session to redistrict. Uh, I will start by saying that, that I'm obviously disappointed. Um, I am certainly not surprised. I knew when I vetoed the bill that that was uh, a possible, if not likely, outcome. And so while I'm disappointed, I can only tell you I would be very much more disappointed had I been complicit in, in having uh, a map that I think is so unfair uh, and unjust uh, enacted into law. I am not. These people who are standing behind me are not. And I will remind you that over the past 10 years, the percentage of African Americans in our state has increased. The percentage of white citizens has decreased um, and yet notwithstanding that and notwithstanding that in nobody in Louisiana not the House the Senate Congress not the PSC not Bessie um, nowhere 
uh, do African Americans have districts where they have the opportunity to elect their members that are consistent with their percentage of the population. But as I've said before, the most egregious of these situations is in the United States Congress, where we have six congressional districts uh, and exactly one a majority minority district. When the population of our state is one third African American, and we know that it is, uh, then simple fa uh, math and simple fairness means that two of those districts need to be minority districts. That's pretty easy to understand. It's not easy to understand why uh, the majority of the House and the Senate refused multiple times to do what is right and what is fair. And nobody should have to have a Voting Rights Act to tell them what is right and fair. Nobody should have to have a court interpret and apply the Voting Rights Act to tell us that what we did was unfair. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, this demonstrates that the state of Louisiana, even in 2022, is not ready to come out of some form of supervision. And, and that is sad. It is tragic. It didn't have to be this way. Um, I, I've said this before. I, I don't think there's another exercise uh, of the legislature that involves more partisanship, more self-interest uh, than in redistricting. And, and that played out, I think, to an unacceptable degree uh, in the congressional map. Um, I, I will tell you that it was a very easy decision for me to veto it. And I can stand on the other side of their vote today to override the veto to tell you that that hasn't changed a bit. I slept good last night. I'm going to sleep good tonight because I did the right thing. Uh, and, and I know that I and these people who are behind me are also on the right side of history uh, on this one. Uh, so um, with that, uh, I'm going to pause and take a, a few questions uh, should you have them. Yes, ma'am. They're saying that the state is not ready to be out of supervision. Yeah. So would you agree that Louisiana should still be under pre-clearance? Well, isn't that obvious? Uh, that, that's, that's pretty obvious. Now, I know that uh, a few years ago, the Supreme Court largely gutted the, the pre-clearance uh, section of the Voting Rights Act. But I think this absolutely demonstrates uh, that. Uh, look, it, what is so hard about Basic math, basic fairness. I don't, I don't get it. Um, it it's, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I knew it would be close, but I, I never counted to 36 in the House or to 14 in the Senate. I want to make sure that, um, I, don't know, I don't know that in the House that anybody had the votes before today, either side had the votes before today. Yes, sir. Roy Darrell Adams, who voted with mm -hmm. you in the last veto override attempt, but voted against you in this mm -hmm. one, said that one of the reasons he voted against you was that you made promises last time that you didn't keep. Um, I wonder if you could respond to that. Well, I would tell you that's completely wrong. And I've had conversations with Roy Darrell last night and then earlier this morning. He certainly never mentioned that to me. Um, but I would just absolutely say that is 100% false. Yes? So how do you uh, see this playing out in court? Well, look, I, I wish I had that crystal ball. Um, and, and I haven't done an exhaustive comparative analysis of all the cases that are moving through courts because obviously the, the entire country redistricted this year. I cannot imagine there is a more compelling case uh, for the courts to take a look at and to overturn than the congressional map here in Louisiana. Um, it, it's, it's not even close. It's not like you have 30 districts and minority, uh, uh, majority district, and the question is whether you have one or two more. Uh, there are exactly half as many as there should be in Louisiana. Uh, and so we're supposed to give um, uh, 
in this case, the African American uh, citizens of Louisiana, enough opportunity districts, meaning meaning districts with with majority minority populations, so that they have the opportunity to elect the congressman of their choice, uh, as their population is to the state as a whole, which is a third. Having having one instead of two, you're a hundred percent off. You are 100% off. I mean, that's, that's just not even close. Uh, and so I would think this is the most compelling case in the country. Um, I would hope, and, and I've, I'm familiar with the Voting Rights Act, um, although nobody should have to know what it says in order to do the right thing here, uh, I happen to believe that, that it's a very clear case that it violates the, the Voting Rights Act. Uh, and if you persist in always defining your communities of interest as they've always been defined, and to prioritize uh, the least amount of changes to existing districts, no matter how the demographics change, and that's what you heard over and over and over again during the redistricting session. These are the communities of interest that we're gonna preserve. These are the existing districts and we're not wanting to change them any more than is absolutely necessary. If that is your priority, you will disregard any demographic change that is reflected by the census. And in fact, that is what happened here. Uh, and it is wrong with a capital W. I'm, I want no part of it. I had no part of it. I am not complicit in it. Go ahead. Last year, you um, were successful in uh, blocking a veto override of the uh, bill that had to do with transgender people in sports. That bill's been filed again, or a very similar version. I was wondering if you plan to veto the bill again or not. Well, I would hope it doesn't reach my desk. And, and if it does, I'll see what it says, and, and you'll hear from me later on that one. Uh, I can tell you that in the year since last session, uh, there hasn't been a single incidence of, of an issue arising anywhere uh, related to the subject matter of that bill, as there has not been at any point previous to last year either. Um, but but we'll we'll take a look at it if if and when it comes up here. But you all know my my views on it. it it's just it's it's pretty sad because if you it's it's theoretically a bill about unfairness, but as you've defined the bill it, it, in the bill, that unfairness it isn't happening uh, in Louisiana. Um, but what is happening is we have some young people who have um, uh, pretty severe uh, um, mental illness in, case, in, in some cases, or I should say uh, emotional uh, issues, um, and it just seems like this is piling on uh, to me. But, but we'll, we'll work on it, and, you know, I, don't, I never uh, discount the possibility that there can be some sort of a compromise or something like that, but, but we'll see. Yes. Governor, you mentioned last year you were successful in blocking the veto override of the transgender sports mm -hmm. bill. Um, one working theory that you've been arguing most of this time is that you spent too much political capital last year. If that's correct, and if not, what's your explanation for why you were successful in blocking it last time? No, well, first of all, they're different bills. And the explanation is something I've already said. The single most partisan thing that happens is redistricting. Uh, the, the, the bill that has the most self-interest uh, at stake is redistricting. And so that, that's what it is in, in this case. Um, and, and, you know, and I think it's unfortunate. Uh, as I said before, I'm, I'm disappointed. Uh, but I am extremely optimistic about our state and the opportunities we have uh, in the session, which I think will resume on Monday. Uh, in order to make sure that we're making the investments that we need to make in our critical priorities. And we've talked about this, whether they're education, health care, by the way, education at all levels, uh, and, and health care, but also infrastructure, including water and sewer and broadband, in addition to roads and bridges and so forth. We, we have more opportunities ahead of us right now uh, than, than we've ever had. And so I, I remain very excited about those things, even as I am disappointed about uh, the outcome for today. Um, and and I, I just think it, it speaks so poorly uh, of, of us collectively 
uh, what, what transpired today. And, and, and I think we should all aspire uh, to do better, to be better. Um, this, this was not our finest day. Uh, but I want to thank you all for um, coming out for the press conference. I do encourage all of you to check the weather, be weather aware, especially before you get on the road. Uh, and, and I'm not just talking to the people in the room here, obviously. I'm talking to all the people at home or wherever you might be as, as you watch this. Uh, this is a very serious uh, weather system that's moving through the state. It will be with us until sometime late uh, tonight. So please be very careful as you go about your business today. And maybe you shouldn't uh, go about your business. Look, thank you all very much. And we'll let you know if there needs to be another press conference soon.